Okay, okay, so next for us, I really want to implement the new user signup, and this is why I created a backup of my CSV file in case I get any errors. So I will right click and create a new JFrame form, which I will call new user frame. Hit finish on there. I'm just going to make it really, really basic uh, and not worry too much about how it looks. I want to work on the functionality. Um, I'm sure you can find tutorials online for how to make it look uh, much prettier. Uh, and that's not really a worry of mine at the moment. So change that variable name, J button exit, and right click properties and do nothing, close. Um, I want to have a button where we can do add new user and the information we are going to need on there is going to be a text field uh, which I'll just erase and change the variable name to username. Now I'm going to do this uh, slightly different from the other one so you can see some options for what you can do here, uh, username. And now just for speed, I'm going to copy paste. Don't recommend it. Um, because you quite often can make very straightforward errors. You can see there, when you do um, rename it, it just tags on a, a number to the end of it. Uh, so we'll go for four name, paste that again, change this one to surname, uh, edit text, uh, so they edit the variable name to read surname. Now I'm going to need, um, Two password fields this time uh, so that we can do some verification, uh, change variable name. I'll just leave it as J password field one and delete all the text from it. And delete the text from it, make it correct size. Same with this one. Right click, edit the text, make it the correct size, a label, uh, password, another label, we enter password. You can see just how quickly that messes up the layout, so just command Z that make it a bit bigger from the off we enter password now if you, if you can look up some tutorials for layout managers and so on um, so that you can do that so we need all of that information and change the variable name if you say it's j password 2 and we can rely on some of the things we had um, so what i'm going to do is uh, i want to have other labels in here, uh, which I am going to edit the text to and say pass uh, username already taken. And we can use the property, oops, we can use the properties of that to go in and change the fonts to size 8, make it bold, the foreground is the, the colour that the font appears, so we'll make it uh, a red colour, let's just go for that one, and we want to scroll down and look for uh, visible, which will be in, in fact, let's make sure we rename it, we can, we can, um, uh, 
always make it visible uh, at the beginning when the frame loads. Uh, so I want to change that video name to, uh, let's say, username warning. And you can do the same uh, for passwords. So quite a few jobs still to do here as part of the plan. Um, if we double click add new user, we'll see uh, that particular uh, method run up. Now I didn't rename that first of all, so I might do that now. Change video name to uh, G button one, add new user. Uh, okay, so what do I want to do? Well, I want to make sure that this works and loads first. So from the login frame, if you go back to our design and double click the new user, we want to uh, do a similar code that we did earlier. So uh, create new um, user frame and dispose of this. So same code as before, we can do um, new user frame, just call it a new equals new user frame, possibly not the best name for that there. Um, nu dot set location, what's the capitalization location? Let's get it from that set location. Scroll down relative to null, so it loads in the center. Nu dot set visible true. This dot suppose. Oops. Too quick typing there and shows the wrong option, dispose brackets. Now, uh, on new user frame, we want to do similar when the user clicks on the exit button. And again, it's going to go back to my earlier project, steal that code uh, for new user frame that we'll put in uh, here, uh, load uh, login frame from Frame. Put that in, we can see that errors appearing again because we need to have uh, the try catch exception for the um, file not being accessible. Uh, and now we can test it. Now we'll see that the username already taken appears, which is a bit silly. Uh, let's just go ahead to load. So if we successfully log in, let's just check. Back to our files there, so C, uh, sorry, uh, rather go for the new user frame. Pops up there, X button returns us here, um, but we didn't dispose of that particular one, so we can see what happens there if you forget to do the dispose option. So if we keep going between the two, we'll start to get lots and lots more. So let's go back and fix that error. Uh, so that is happening here because it didn't do this dot dispose uh, when we return to the login frame. Let's just check from login frame we are disposing. So let's just test that real quick before we do any more. And then the errors start to compound. So we go click on new user, that frame disappears, hit the X, and there we go. We're only dealing with one frame at a time. So we want to do the, the initial um, parts here, I guess, uh, which will be checking for the username, storing the username and so on. So if we go to new user, you scroll up and you can see the init components. So um, set uh, labels to invisible at start. Now it is possible to do this from in the options are just we didn't want to waste time looking for it when I can't actually find it. So it should be in properties. Let's just check properties and check for visible. Uh, it should be at the bottom. And I can't actually see it. Uh, there should be an option in here so that we can set it to visible, but no problem. We'll get the variable name. 
and we can paste that in there similar to how we used before to set it to false and it was set visible the same as the others uh, to false. Now we can go back to that add new user button now and think about what we need to do. We need to uh, store details from the form. We need to check passwords match, check if the username exists already. So if we think from the uh, login frame, we've already got uh, this list of all users uh, that we can pass over. So similarly, we can copy from that go into our new user frame and just pass that object now with some better design um, we could have uh, simplified this a bit here so all user just call it all au if we're on the real list and all users equals au so this saves us having to do the file reading uh, part again um, it's possibly not the smartest way to do it and in fact I would have to look into interfaces I believe to make a, a more sensible way uh, to do that um, because we can't inherit from multiple classes um, so I'm just going to pass it over for now bearing in mind that it's uh, quite a lot of data potentially for a larger project that would be sent over but that's fine for now uh, you can actually see that code that I was looking at here for setting things to visible and so on there um, and this part here I'm just actually going to delete this this time from the bottom everything from the public static void main it's not required um, for this project and that was just giving me the error saying that you haven't um, stored it so what do we want? We want to get string temp username equals j label underscore. Let's just check the names of them or j text field, sorry, j text field underscore username. They're all similar. So it's j text field underscore username dot. And again, I'm trying to be fast there. Uh, I just like to copy paste the names because then I can't make any spelling mistakes. Goes green when it's correct. Dot get uh, text string uh, temp for name equals for name. And again, trying to be smart. Just check it out. Right click, change video name. It's a capital list name of use, which is why we're getting the problem. Forename dot get text string temp surname equals see if you can guess this one surname dot get uh, text. Um, we need to do string password one equals. Uh, now I'll just get that from here and do uh, uh, J password field one. Now remember from last time this new string J password one dot get. Oops, get password we want. And then the same for the second one string password two equals new string J password two got get password so we've got all our temp data now uh, to check if needs be we can uh, check that uh, a username exists and uh, go from there so I want to figure out or finish this design rather I'm going to put a new label in there which I will edit the text and say passwords 
must match. Now I won't I won't do all of the things that need to be done here uh, to get this working um, because we could add feature after feature for this. So we will go to um, the video name of this one, and it's going to be password warning. That's the label. So same as we did before. Uh, the password warning dot set visible false. Now I will take this code now. Whenever we click on that button at the start, um, want to hide previous error messages so that they disappear. And again, we could have probably best actually creating a, a, a private procedure to do that. So we have private, private void hide error messages. So just put the code in there and just call that method hide error messages. And similarly on our form load, uh, hide error messages, hide error messages called, semicolon. Okay, so let's get the one working uh, for passwords and we'll again probably have a boolean here to make sure that all the data is uh, fine so we can have if um, p11 dot equals p2 equals false then that label uh, password warning we want to my layout here, okay. You want that set to true. And similarly for the username, uh, if temp username dot equals uh, we can use that label that we created already, um, which was called just check that one. So username warning was set visible to true. Uh, username dot set text. Please enter a username. So just to show you uh, how you can get that working. Now let's see what errors we're having on this one somewhere. Let's see the errors that are appearing. Scrolling down, so you can see the red part there. Uh, new user frame, new user frame. I, I haven't passed the argument like before, so that is just all users that's been read in from the file here. Press play, it goes away. Uh, so now when it loads, we click on new user and I click add new user. We can see please enter a username appears. Uh, so when we type in a username, we get the add new user appearing. Obviously at this point we would have please enter a phone name, please enter a surname, please enter a password, re-enter password. And if I type in a password, which I'll intentionally make not match, we add new user, we can see passwords must match. If I type in matching passwords now, to add a new user, you can see that that goes away. Um, and basically you can build that up uh, with all of those checks. Uh, the main part being, if going back to the new user frame, is that the username doesn't already exist. Um, so I'm gonna have a boolean uh, check equals true. So set it true to the beginning. If we set the password running, then we're going to set the check to false. That means we're not going to proceed uh, with getting the user logged in. Uh, so I wouldn't do that if the check, uh, if check, you can just do it for true. 
uh, we want to check the username already exists and then we can display error message uh, else we could use what we've got already from the login frame we could go and steal uh, the part here that tells the user Please correct all errors on the form. Now, uh, if, if the check's OK, we want to check if the username already exists. So, boolean found, try not to make the same mistakes we made earlier, int uh, i equals zero, while i is less than all users dot size and found equals false. Uh, we want to say if all users dot get i dot get username dot equals uh, temp username check we fill that correctly temp username then that means they can't have this username and found to make sure we set it equal to false at the start. Uh, then we need to say found equals true, semicolon, and then learning from a mistake the last time, increment that counter. Outside the loop, uh, if found is false, then add this user, else uh, display error message about matching user name. So if found, we come back later, I need to do a add temp user and then this part here, file write, which will be in a subsequent video after that. Uh, else, uh, we can move that part in there. Uh, and again, can I tidy up my messages here? Uh, and steal this part here and say G option pane uh, username. This username is already used. Please enter another. Now, the other things we can do to make it um, more visible to the user. use the little labels we've got uh, to do that. Now, what I'm expecting to happen there, uh, add temp user, we will do in a little second. So press play, we can see your list there. So let's start up hit new user. Um, obviously, we try and add a new user and it's blank, we get please correct all errors in the form. With the, the username part popping up, so we got year 02, which is obviously already in use. Steve Davis, password 123, password 123, uh, well, change the four, so we should get the error popping up telling us passwords must match. 123, add new user. Now the error not popping up. Uh, to tell us they match, so let's just check back and see what happened there. Finds true. I need to swap the order of this round, made a mistake. If found is true, it means we did find a match with that username. Uh, else, add this user to the array list and write new user to file, which will be an append operation. So let's try that again. Uh, build and run. So we know all the error checking parts working, so we go to new user, year, go to, try and do it, um, and it pops up, this username's already used. We get the duplicate username part appearing. Um, the password 
pop that in. Please correct all errors in the form. Passwords must match. The other other errors gone away. We can fix that if we spend a bit of time uh, on it. Eight oh one. Uh, passwords not matching. Add new user. Obviously, at this point, everything's okay. Um, when we want to add that person to uh, a real list, so. Uh, we want to create a user temp equals new user. We want to pass in uh, the uh, username, which was temp username, uh, temp for name, temp surname, and pw1 because obviously the passwords are the same. And then we want to uh, pass back in, uh, or add rather, this temp user back to the list, and uh, write user to file, and we will pass over the temp to that. Now we need to implement that function, which is why we are getting an error at the moment. So some of the things I want to do at this point now, I want to like dispose of this frame uh, and return to uh, login frame. You could, if you wanted to, proceed to login from there if you wanted. Now, what I want to do is, is, is take advantage of polymorphism here. Now for my login frame, um, I don't always want it to um, automatically uh, do the read from user or CSV each time because it's silly. We don't need to read in each time. It's not particularly an issue, but I just want to take advantage of polymorphism and have um, it accept an array list of user you here, which we can see all users equals you. So that gives us polymorphism. We've got two constructors now. And from the new user frame, still get that, that error there. So I'm going to comment it out for a second. And what I want to do is uh, the same part that we've got on exit. So I'm going to copy the exit code I've got to dispose. Now we'll see that error pop up there. Now what I want to pass back to is all users because that's the updated user that we've uh, added in and it will close and set that visible. So if we try running again, now the only problem would be it's not it's not writing it to the file just yet, which we'll, we'll see here won't change. And uh, it will add in. So we go to new user and uh, if we try that, uh, I think actually it'll work okay there. You can see uh, we've got a strange error there where something's not gone quite right. Uh, with that, I think, organ frame. I need to check why that's uh, LF sort location relative to null. Uh, if that's uh, now, I think the reason actually for that is, as you can see, the very important part I missed uh, for the login frame that's to initialize. The components so let's try that one again I will quit that first run just to check that out again uh, so we go to new user type in add new user and you can see that it, it just added successfully it would be probably a best a better idea there to um, have some sort of confirmation message pop up and again that's I don't want to run through that because it's something we've seen already um, that should be very easy for you to add in okay so we talked about uh, the new user frame uh, writing a user to file so I am going to go here uh, and just add in some comments create a procedure private procedure to append to file. Now I need to look some of these parts up. So on private, void, no return type. And I think we called it 
write user to file and it's going to take um, that temp object which is a user we'll just call it t for temp here now I can borrow lots of the code from login frame this particular part here down to getting the current relative path so I'm just going to copy that and reuse it now this again possibly could have made um, a class to deal with the file reading writing would have been smarter um, because I'm now copy pasting code which we should hopefully know from pattern matching um, and our skills and that, that that's a silly thing to do it's slightly different what we've got to do we're going to do a try catch um, where we create a buffered writer buffered writer uh, which I'll just call it out equals new buffered writer um, again using the new file writer object similar to what we did before path to CSV uh, and I think let's think here um, I think we want to do true so that it appends to the file now this is why I've got that backup copy um, and we'll soon find out if that's um, correct or not so we want to add these imports to get rid of these errors throw the clause on the method right there so that will trigger some other errors we need to fix to tell it how to handle it uh, what do we want to do? We want to do out dot write those uh, details in order from the user. So again, my laziness here means I need to go and fix these parts. Um, now what we could do, just to make our lives a bit easier here, if we do public string um, uh, get text um, and we can return a username and take advantage of the fact that they're all here make make our lives a bit easier username plus forename plus uh, comma between these plus surname surname spelled correctly comma plus um, password and in our new user frame out.write temp dot t will be sorry as we called it uh, let's just check what they called it I think it was called get text uh, t dot get text and what I want to do actually after that is backslash n for it to write a new line. Now that should hopefully work. Um, and what we want to do after we've written that line, we want to do out dot flush and out dot close. Uh, which we need to do here inside the try catch part. Uh, now when we close these currently running ones, hopefully now, now we'll, I'll need to fill in all the details this time when we go to new user, uh, so Colin, phone name Colin, Galpine, password123, password123, add new user, seems to have gone through, no problems, we've got no problems there. Now if we uh, exit and close that file and open it again, hopefully we see at the bottom of the file uh, it's not actually saved it correctly, so we'll need to go and check what's happened there. So I was wondering why um, my file writing <clears throat> didn't work. So, uh, the first thing I thought to do was to test uh, whether t.gottext was actually working. So I've put the print here to do that, and I actually just ran it, and you can see there's no output 
which meant that this method was never ever starting. And this is a very silly error I made. And it was earlier on I uncommented or commented out the code that would actually call that. Um, and we can see as soon as I do that, we get the error talking about dealing with the uh, try catch exception for that particular um, procedure call. Uh, so hopefully now, if I run it again, we at least get something happening. And I do have my backup of that should I need it. So new user. Um, let's try C McKay nineteen eighty three. Colin, let's change the name so we can see it. One, two, three, one, two, three. So I'll, I'll just be very careful, fill it in properly. Click add new user. We can see disappeared back to the login frame. Uh, I would like it if we had that pop up telling us it was okay. We can see the print out appearing here, which is in the same order. And then the proof will be uh, when we close that file and open it again, hopefully. We can see it's loaded now. Here's the problem that uh, my backup will be useful for, and that is because uh, I didn't have the new line uh, at the beginning of that statement, which is fine. So let's edit these back so we don't get any errors uh, when we read the file in. So we'll save that, and we will fix the file writing part so that instead of writing that new line at the end, every time we start, we will start off on a new line. Uh, we can comment out the print line part. Now, um, this would be a good function to have um, to recall again from other parts should you uh, need to at any point. So let's try that. Uh, make sure it's working the way we expect. Uh, so we can see we've got that there. In fact, I'm just going to add in um, the piece that I keep saying that I will do on new user frame where uh, this part here is called. Uh, so we will do right use the file and um, we'll get the J option pane, I'll just steal that code. Inform user of success at adding new user. Um, change the message, you have successfully registered. Uh, change the message to um, we'll just, just go for information message again, run it again, um, give it a few seconds to start, new user, username, uh, cmk, let's change it, uh, mummy, uh, mummy, calpine, one, two, three, one, two, three, add new user, we get that message informing us you're successfully registered, which is much more um, informational than just jumping back to this screen. So you can see I mistyped that there. So mamu123, login, and we can see that the login was actually successful. And uh, the way we can prove it was successful is if we refresh our CSV file, and hopefully it's in the correct format, and you can see there that we have that new user registered uh, like so, so fix the spell mistake I made. So you could see that instantly worked because we were able to log in um, as that new user. So what I would suggest at this point is making this look much nicer um, and uh, have all the uh, error messages appearing so it's completely user friendly. Maybe increase and change the font. You can make this look a lot easier with just a little bit of extra work. But you can see how much work we've done so far to really not achieve very much. Basically just logging in um, 
as a as a user basically and not accessing any of the data that you want to which will come uh, in the next couple of videos.